Hey, Paddle Talking World Sand Drag News fans. You can watch every episode on World Sand Drag News YouTube along with all of our other content, which is badass sand drag racing action. Or you can find us on Spotify by searching for Paddle Talk. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well for more content on sand drag racing. Don't forget to check out our website, worldsanddragnews.com, for our list of world records, a schedule of events, articles from past races, and much more by our sponsor stuff. Speaking of our sponsors, I just got an ad read for Lone Star Graphics. Shout out to Lone Star Graphics, your on-site source for everything from photo prints, t-shirts, license plates, mouse pads, carry bags, you name it. Gary Michelle, Lone Star Graphics. Find them at LoneStarGraphics.com. Check out their stuff. They have photo galleries going all the way back to, what, 2006, I believe. So Pro Truck National, early days even. If you want to see some old action from there, check out their photo galleries. And you can still order all those products from even those old galleries. LoneStarGraphics.info. Welcome to another episode of Paddle Talk. We are joined Woo! by John Sorg, Damian Bowers, Caleb Mings, and of course, Isaac DeHaan. On today's show, we have a talk with Derek Howard and the results from the March race at Atoka Motorsports Park in Atoka, Oklahoma. We talk with Nick Storr from New England Sand Drags. He is our World Sand Drag News correspondent for New England Sand Drags. I talk about what New England Sand Drags has coming up for their season this year. We're going to have a preview for Dome Valley's race this weekend. And then we are going to start the show right now with our race recaps from the three kind of main races that went on this weekend. America's Oasis in Winoka, Oklahoma, which I, which I went to. And then there was a race in Puerto Rico that we'll touch on a little bit as well. But we are going to start in Lake Elsinore, where records were dropping like crazy. And it was, I mean, the real record maybe I think it was because I think it's because no ATVs were there. I think that's I think it's made the track <laughs> oh, so fast. Yeah, yeah. Shots fire. Ouch, Billy. Ouch. From the new quad I'm, just, guy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't mean to make your wounds bigger, but I, but no, I think the the Caleb instant reaction from the weekend. Just... Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was definitely weird uh, being there and not racing. Um, Definitely a challenging weekend, um, battling some issues with, you know, the weather. Had a couple of, uh, we had Friday night, uh, got cut short uh, due to a rainstorm that came through. Had a little bit of sprinkling um, through Sunday. Um, had a little bit of issue with the lights, like good old Race America system issues strike again. Um, but some crazy, crazy numbers. It was so cool to see um, all the, the turnout from, like, the Midwest and East Coast um just phenomenal with with all of those guys and uh you can tell me yep i will billy <laughs> uh so we'll get it we'll get into some of those record way, numbers way. and stuff um starting out friday so the only class that they got to was the 395 index bob cambridge took the win over danny west um they started the friday pro gambler um but then the rain as i said cut that short they picked that up back on Saturday. Um, the Friday Pro Gambler, uh, Justin Adamson, took the win over Ron Huff in the Hang and Loose oh, Jeep. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hold uh, on, hold on. Who, who, who? That's right, that's right. You heard it. Justin Adamson, your race pick there. So, Isaac, you got he one. He chose him for there. the Dooner class. That doesn't count. Yeah, that's true. That's Whoa, true. No, that's for the not Dooner fair. Class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, Caleb. Did you tell Bob Cambridge what I said about his buggy? I told, tell him him it's a go- I told him it's a gorgeous buggy. I'm going to tell him in April. Bob, if you're watching this, come on the show. You have a gorgeous dune buggy. Love it. He does. He does. A fast cool. Um, Sport 1, we saw Kevin Williams take the win over Danny West. So Danny getting two do- uh, runner-ups there. Sport 2, Joseph Weaver taking the win over Tom Crail. Joey, man, he was, uh, he's was he got suspension on that, that single-seat Jeep now, and he was pulling some wheel stands and doing everything he could to not loop the thing. <laughs> uh, the Dooner shootout, uh, Bill Coulter, that was kind of a, a surprise win there. Um, ended up getting a couple lucky rounds with his uh, Volkswagen. So, yeah, Bill Billy, Volkswagen. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, took the win over Butch Woolen in his Larry Minor Motorsports Jeep. 
Bill also took the best reaction time bonus, and Ooh. Butch uh, got the closest to dial bonus. So it was kind of cool to see number one and two there getting some bonuses as well. And I bet he was leaving off the clutch the whole time. No bonus. Oh, absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> Saturday night pro gambler Dennis Burroughs took yeah! the win over Chris Adamson. So congrats to Dennis. He was super stoked. I mean, he absolutely loved that track. He said it was so cool just – his his uh his drags are felt like it just pulled hard the whole way he says it feels it, at thunder valley his home track like he he feels that on the launch and then the past 60 foot it kind of he says it gets up on top kind of settles down and he's like man it just it just felt like it pulled the whole whole 300 foot so super cool to him dennis yeah, well, uh we'll get into i see his, what you did there caleb I see what <laughs> i'm you just did. you know <laughs> um but uh we'll get into well, what, uh, another thing that dennis has got going so that's pretty cool for him um We'll go through. I'll save the the heads of classes for last. There, um, Sunday we kicked it off with the kids classes. Um, the youth uh, UTV dragster class, Aubrey Fauche took the win over her, te- her teammate Drake McCrary in their go karts, and then in the youth ATV. That's right. They still they still allow the kids on the bikes. Yeah. Uh, Austin Good. Kissel took the win over Bella Hills. Pro one, we saw AJ Gazzini take the win over Bob Cambridge. So Bob getting a, a runner up there. Pro two, Wayne Gunter took the win over Blake Adamson. Hey. Wayne was stuck on that. Yeah. He, was, he was running good. Uh, Saturday he had a fuel pump go bad, but um, got that fixed and and definitely uh, turned it around to a good weekend for him. Use and then like Napa know how. <laughs> he, I don't. He might have got it from Napa. We'll see. I don't know. Wayne, if um, you're here, three. you need to come on the show as well. Yes. Wayne and yes, Sandra. Absolutely. Pro three, uh, we saw Jeff Adamson take the win over nephew Blake. So Blake doubling up on the runner up, still looking for that first win for him, but two second places. Okay, so okay, so my my okay, so my Jeff, he gave me Jeff, so that counts. If Isaac's pick counts earlier, <laughs> that definitely counts. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I but I hold on to Blake, so I get to two finals plus a win. That's still better there, Buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Pro three. Pro three. Good job, Jeff. There we go. And then uh, for the heads-up classes, so we saw on Top Alcohol, um, had a couple of the guys from Pro Mod um, enter, double enter into Top Alcohol, and we saw Bobby Cottrell um, in the seat of Chris Miner's Flower Power Jeep. Who is win. this man? Who so, is this man? Bobby. He's uh, a top golf funny car guy. He he's tip- a freaking superhero. He came out of nowhere. <laughs> he typically drives a nostalgia fuel funny car. So it uh, we'll we'll talk about him a little bit later um in the show here um after we get through the results. Very cool conversations with the comparison between sand and asphalt. Um, Bobby doubled up, winning Pro Mod Unlimited over Kyle Farwick. Um, Kyle doing some awesome work, setting some crazy numbers. Um, on his second time or th- third time, second time at, at uh, Elsinore, third time to California. Right. Um, Hold on. Before we go any further, shout out to Bobby Cottrell. That's awesome. He came out and just did it like that. Shout out to uh, Kyle Farwick. 268 with a small block is insane. Um, mm-hmm. And an altered. And shout out to Cody Trice for running a 287. Yeah. Yeah. Trice uh, went out there and uh, was double entering in uh, top eliminator and um, pro mod unlimited. So it was cool to see him run both classes there. Show the picture um, behind you. Yeah. See, right. I do love nitrous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fuel, um, a fuel, man, it was, it was a tough class. They were having lots of issues there, but um, a fuel final art Cronin in the meltdown two dragster took the win over Daniel King in a new, uh, Volkswagen buggy that he brought out. Pretty cool machine. That thing was oh, sweet. Who, who was runner up there? Daniel King. <laughs> Whatever. Different different vehicle than you thought, though, Isaac. So that doesn't uh, matter. It all, it all <laughs> goes with the driver. The one, the one time my top alcohol, the one time I choose top alcohol. And just, <laughs> you, happens jinx, to, you jinx Jim. Well, and well Bob, sure no, and Bobby, Bobby, Bobby just showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> and then here's a pretty cool story. Top eliminator Jim Napziger in his 10th, 11th straight final in top eliminator 
That's insane. And alcohol between Dome Valley and and uh, Elsinore, and I think Avenal too, took the win over Tristan Graham in his new Hemi powered whiskey business. <laughs> We need to get some of these Californians out this way for a race sometime. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a different episode. Contain your squirrels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, but that's dude for real though. Jim Nafziger is the real deal. Like if he shows up to Atoka and does it in Atoka, then I'll he'll probably be number two on my list and top eliminator drivers in the country. Like, oh, who's your number one? Well, that's a different topic. Okay. But if you need to know, he, <laughs> Laurel. if you need to know, and we'll, I'll say it just once and we'll get over it. It's Adam Rowe. That's my number one top preliminary racer in the country. So, um, anyway, yes, these results were the weekend was whole, was awesome. Uh, it was. I, I wonder going back to Wayne Gunner and that Jeep, what was his best number? You know, so, actually, I have that. Uh, did he break his record? He did. Yeah. So, oh. actually, this is pretty cool. Um, Wayne, our current D Sport modified four wheel drive record holder, um, he actually broke the D and the B Sport modified four wheel drive record with a 3.784 ET. Hold up. So. Keith is still going to hold on to the the mile an hour there. Um, Wayne did run quicker than his uh, record uh, for the D Sport modified four wheel drive, um, but wasn't able to back it up. Uh, ran like an eighty six something mile an hour pass, uh, but pretty cool to see the small block taken over the big block four wheel drive sport modified class. Very. And uh, I got some photos finally of that. I know everybody's been talking about this small block Hemi deal. And I'm like, what in the world does that even mean? <laughs> it's awesome. Dude, look at it. It's, it's awesome, isn't it? It's a looking little motor, ain't it? Yeah. So uh, definitely check out the live stream for the full full breakdown on that. Um, we got to talk with Wayne a little bit. And it was it's a pretty cool deal. So, so let's go back and talk about the fast passes made yeah. this weekend at Elsinore real quick and then we'll move on to the other recaps. Um let's work our way well, up. So we've got we've got um Wayne Gunter there. Dennis okay. Burroughs, I don't have the exact time on hand, but he reset his C dragster E T record. Um and I think it. he broke the mile an hour I record. I love that too. I love that car. And and if uh Dennis if you're watching this, I told you in person I got dibs on that car when you're ready to sell it. I already told you that. And Maybe. on on the note of for everyone that complains about his picture, we finally get to put a picture up there with him wearing pants in the car. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Yeah, he wasn't forced to wear pants at all. That's the only thing. He's just he was willing this time. It actually was a little chilly through most of the weekend. It looked, so I think like it it was, looked cool. Was, yeah, I was about, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I felt so bad for all the people first time coming to the track and. Yeah, you know, they're expecting but, California weather, and we're like, yeah, sorry, we're overcast for well, and rainy. For Absolutely record, not. Weather not for record, time. weather for ETs, weather for better track conditions, you couldn't ask for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Performance yeah, wise. It all yep. works out at the end. Um, but uh, Dennis with pants, so the added weight on there didn't affect him. <laughs> <laughs> so 3.63 something was uh, where the record stands now on the ET side. What was that? Say it again. Three point what? Three point six three something. I I can't remember the last number. I'm um, pulling up the right That's here. Uh, three six nine five. Yeah, so he reset it to a three sixty three. Yep. yep. That's insane. Uh, and and then but then um I don't know if you have anybody in between there, but the Cody Trice resetting the uh A altered. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't just say Cody. Cody and David and. Um, everybody they had help along with what they were trying to do. That's really freaking awesome. And uh, Damien mentioned this uh, fastest nitrous car in Sandrags. Honestly, it's the fastest non roots or screw blown type car at this point because it even outruns the 288 that our friend Christian over in. Iceland ran a couple of years ago, but didn't back up yeah. for that record. Okay. So he is wow. out there really moving. They're slowly figuring out this combination more and more. 
it has a lot more in it because they're back up past 289. They let off damn near 20 miles per hour trying to slow it down back to the 295. Yeah, they actually, yeah, they could have been, they could have had like the 87 could have possibly been a backup. So right they put, now, they they put a new uh, transmission in that car Saturday and they, they said, man, we wish that we had put this new trans in it from the beginning of the weekend because they, they definitely leaned on it harder and they found, you know, a lot more there. Um, asterisk, fastest nitrous pass, not backed up record, Bob Gill. Um, still has that oh, at a yeah. 283 okay. eight. Um, and good. I would like to to take this moment to make it fully public and clear it up. Um, my god, we did screw up as an organization, <laughs> okay? So, Bob Gill, as you can see, the car if you're um, watching on YouTube, yeah. um, behind yeah. Isaac's uh stuff when, when you see him speak, that car should have held our a altered record at a 289 that's what was backed up within one percent um we had the wrong numbers on there for a long time and you know we we kind of discovered that spoke with the the trice crew and they said it's all good they knew that they were chasing after bob's numbers um and they went on did it 2.873 oh, Nine. Um, 2.879 backed up. Wow. That's so freaking fast. That's awesome. Shout out to Trice Racing. Um, I think far... they, Go ahead. I Go think ahead. They've got some low 80s in it still this year. If they can keep it going A to B like they have been. For sure. For sure. Um, Kyle Farrick running a 268 with a three. Uh, John Sorg, instant reaction when you seen that. 268 with a three. That was really impressive, man. I was really hoping to see him back it up. No kidding. Man, what did you think, Isaac? 268 with a three? You know what, man? I mean, those guys deserve it. That's what I'll say. They work hard. I, I, and I know, now, that being said, Kyle, we need you on for an episode, even if it's just a little 10 minute shot. I agree. We just need you on here, buddy. But yes. I, seriously, though, those guys go to the track, they put in their work, and they just put the number on, and they let that car speak for itself. And you know what? Hats off to everybody involved in that thing. Uh, Drew race car chassis. Tell you what, man, things got it going on. They do, man. They are. They got something figured out. That's for sure. I mm -hmm. wish, like, like John, like John said, I wish they could have backed it up, man. Small. They were not close to bringing that record back to the states. Yeah, they've been working their way there. The fact they're doing it with a small block. That's it, yeah, it's still over 395, but it's on the smaller end of the spectrum for combinations you'd see for an A four wheel drive style class because its competition is like the screw blown Hemis and such from the Middle East right now. Yeah, let's not forget Nick Schultzman also running a 262 with an eight. Ooh. Yeah, same that, same deal there. Couldn't quite back it up. He actually broke the the rear end in that car and borrowed some parts i think from wayne gunter too um to oh, be able to put the rear end back together and they still ran like a 277 on sunday and with with spare parts and the wrong um you know rear gear in that car so like at, it was very impressive and um you know uh nick did walk away with the new mile an hour record at 126.96 he went as fast as 130 miles an hour in a short car so, awesome. dang, I mean, that that's super impressive. And, uh, you know, there's been there's been talk about maybe um, right now that's kind of essentially a souped up um, old uh, top dragster motor that he's got in there. Um, Nick, uh, Nick uh, Schultzman, part of uh, the Plan B Motorsports team on pavement. Uh, they're talking about taking one of uh, Taylor Vetter's top alcohol dragster motors and throw it in, in that chassis to see what they can do on sand. So we could do that. Uh, we might be seeing a battle for, you know, some, some, the first 30 pass in a short car. That would be nuts. I don't know who's going to do yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it might be Bobby. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's, let's get to that. Bobby Cottrell well, taking the, uh, well, hold on. Not yet. Then Jimmy DePass run a, a Jimmy DePass. Pass. 
Jim, okay, yeah. So, guys, this is a crazy story here in in the Pro Mod Unlimited class that they run out here in, in Southern California. Um, a lot of those vehicles, they qualify either for our top alcohol altered record or our double A Pro Modified record. Um, so we went back and forth. Jimmy DePass, current record holder um, with a 2.644. He went out there, ran a 2.640 first day out, ends up going to run at a 2.62 gets it down to a backed up 260 with a six he, and and jimmy had been talking about he's been hunting for the first 50 so we had 50 almost a 50 pass from there we had schultz go run a 62 we had farwick go out and run a 68 and then out of the blue the top alcohol final we see bobby cutrell in the flower power chris minor racing jeep run a two 49 at 139 miles an hour. Yeah, 139 <laughs> miles an hour. Oh my I God. I I had to pause and look at the <laughs> scoreboard to make sure that I was not missing something because he beat Jim Hammond to the line. And Jim was was running on a little bit of a hurt motor there, ran a, a 2 250. Um Jim Hammond, if you guys didn't see our our feeds Ran a 2.38.0. The first 30 pass, he's been hunting for that for a very long time. He was looking to back it up. He wanted to be, you know, have that world record for top alcohol dragster. Didn't quite get it. Like I said, having having some issues there. Parts were were starting to get hurt. And, and just, it didn't quite hold together. But man, to see Bobby outrun him to the finish line was insane. Pop quiz. There's only been two people ever in top alcohol dragster to run a 230 pass. Who can name them? Gary Mink. Gary Mink and now Who's Jim the Hammond. Hammond. Now Jim Hammond. Jim Hammond. Exactly. Yeah, Jim Hammond. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, that's a that's a good club to be a part of. Like it's it was a club of one. Now it's a club of two. It's insane. Insane. Oh my. Two thirty eight. I bet he was. Shout out to shout out to Jim. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Brian. <laughs> Shout out to Brian for tuning yep. in that thing. He's a freaking Bob DeVore as well. Bob DeVore had it for a while. Yeah. So that was uh man, that final was awesome. And then, you know, so I went over and quickly interviewed them. They were super stoked and they went around and serviced the car and had to run the Pro Mod Unlimited final where they ended up Running against Kyle Farwick, Kyle was searching for that backup. Didn't quite get it um, on that final round, but Bobby uh, Cottrell ran a two forty-seven with a. F- hold on, hold on. I'm searching for it. Two forty-seven nine. Two forty-seven nine pass, and they oh. ran faster than the mile an hour. Um, they didn't back up the 139, but they've got the new record at 134.48. That record was actually held by um, the same car, a different incarnation of it, for many, many, many years at 133 miles an hour. So just yeah. to be able to break both ends of that and to absolutely shatter the AA Pro Modified record at a 247.9, mind-boggling. Dude, Absolutely hope, mind-boggling. I hope they keep pushing because that's – that's damn it. That's that it's was epic. epic. That's epic. Yes. There's I was... now we've got what five cars faster than what used to be the top fuel altered top fuel funny cars in sand. Crazy. That's insane. That's insane. They're pushing. <laughs> they're pushing some serious limits here, and it's awesome to see. And I'm glad that you know the potential of that machine. That Bobby Cottrell is driving that minor racing owns is showing its roots. I spoke to Chris Miner after running that 47. He he's not satisfied yet. I mean, he he <laughs> really wants to see 30s. I'm I'm serious. Wow. He said that the next milestone is they want to be in the 30s. So we were joking about them like completely skipping over 250s and went straight to 240s. Their best pass prior to that was a 262. So or 263, I think. One of those. How long until we see that thing with some six foot flames out the side with a little bit of nitro? 
well, I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it at this point. Look at the li <laughs> look at the limits they're breaking without it. I don't think they need it. Yeah. Plus, I don't. They wouldn't really have a class to run with it because Pro Mod yeah. Unlimited they uh they don't allow nitromethane. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that was our Lake Elsinore preview, or excuse me, not preview. That was our Lake Elsinore recap, and uh, we're going to shift one more over. Thing. What, yes, okay, one, more thing. one more thing. So I, I do. With before we shift over to the next segment here, I do want to just bring up a little bit more about Bobby. Um, so we said that he typically runs uh, a nostalgia nitro funny car, and you know I spoke with him a little bit about the differences between running a quarter mile pavement car, very little downforce and a sand car and he just every single time he, he told me like man this car is such like a bigger handful than anything he's ever driven on pavement said that the entire pass it's just the back end is walking out on you and that you've got to really manhandle it he says the nitro funny car it really only gets that kind of sketchy at the very top end um when you know <laughs> tires are real skinny on that thing and it's starting to break loose but he just he had such a, a newfound respect for for the sand crowd and um it was just it was really cool to see him you know talk about it and to be able to tell a little bit of the differences between you know the nitro funny car realm and and doing sand drag so but he had an absolute blast and i think he'll be he'll be back in the saddle a few more times isaac Caleb, uh, so for a long time, Jim Hammond has said once that car ran a 30, he was stepping out. Is he holding to that, or does he want to give it one more run? And I think I, 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 I think he wants to. I think he wants to get the record now. Honestly, um, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't really give me a, a a vibe that he was done after that. I think he, he wants, wants more. You know and. I think I think he'll be in it for a little bit longer. Well, shout out to Jim. Nice. Hammond. Good for shout him. Out, shout out to Bobby Cottrell for that dude can drive. So yeah, yeah, he can. Shout out to that dude. Um okay, now we are going to move on to the race that I went to with my mom. We went to the America's Oasis race in Winoka, Oklahoma. It was Sand Outlaw series hosted. Excuse me. It was I hate you when I got to restart shit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, we are moving on to the America's Oasis race that I went to. It was presented by Sand Outlaw Series, hosted by America's Oasis, and they didn't really have a ton of classes. But it was still a pretty good time. First time going to this track, and it's only like four hours from my house, so it was an easy drive. And um, the future of this track looks pretty bright. So I'll just get right into the race winners. They had a stock turbo class, and uh, their first place winner was Roberta Fisher. Second place winner was Dustin Couch. And then they had an open bracket race. Anybody could race in it. Uh, pretty cool story about this before I name the winners. Um, they had there was only ten there was only ten people in this uh, bracket race, um, but it was a hundred percent payback and a hundred dollar entry. And there was eight side by sides, a ten year old on a four stroke quad, and Anthony Moss running his blower car <laughs> alongside <laughs> these guys, and. The 10 year old on the quad is his first time racing, bracket racing. And all he knew was leave on the third yellow. Um, this 10 year old ends up taking third place, which paid out $200. And he cut the best reaction time, which of the, he cut the best reaction time during the eliminations, which was an 029, I think. And mm -hmm. that won him a $500 gift card for a new set of wheels from. I can't remember which what the place was, but that kid showed up for his first time racing and took home like seven hundred bucks, basically. Ah! It was crazy. <laughs> Good grief. That, set, neat. that fish hook's gonna be set really neat. <laughs> I can't remember his name, but I remember his dad's name is Jeff Kearns. I don't remember the kid's name. I'm sorry. But now 
I find it funny people complaining about sand bra- sandbagging at that race. <laughs> Again, you know, it's, yeah, because Pete, yeah, race, they, you know, come on. They asked if after the race, they asked if drag somebody used a draggy system while they were racing in the bracket race, so they could like see the time as soon as they took off. Which even the stop- it starts the it starts right. timing as soon as you take off, and so he was looking at it as he was going down the track, and he knew his dial in. But yeah, I don't. I watched I the don't, video. It's I don't not, buy it's not that. Totally that even in a stock pickup truck, that's a lot to really calculate in your head to know when you need to hit the brakes to slow down at the right time and still be in front of the guy next to you. <laughs> Keep talking. Yeah, and I mean, those things name. don't have that big of screens either. So I mean, you're looking at a tiny <laughs> screen. And as you're saying, Dave, you're you're trying to like, okay, it's getting there. It's like it's like any of those carnival games where you're trying to like hit the the button to stop the light as it goes around the frame or something to win a prize. It's like, you, you sure you could you could say that it helps, but I don't I don't I don't buy that. Well, <laughs> and hey, and man, the like, draggy doesn't calculate your reaction time. So yeah, even if you're dead the- on, but you're cutting a four fifty light, what does it actually help you? Right. True. Yeah, I seen that and I was like, wait a minute. Huh? That facility looks awesome though, Billy. I mean Oh yes. Okay. Tell, tell His name is it. Justin Kearns. I had just watched Justin a video Kearns. on it. His name is Justin, Justin. Kearns. Yes. We hope you help to see you out at more races. Well shoot. I told him about Toka. I th- yeah, they're actually from go. Kansas. They're actually from somewhere uh near Pratt, Kansas. I know you guys don't know where anywhere that is, but no they, like it, right it, it'd be a pretty track, good right? drive for him to get to any race, basically. But they go to the dunes, and I'm trying to get more races at this place so they can go racing there more. Oh, often. totally. Uh, they anyway, Justin Kearns, the 10 year old I was just talking about, he got third place in the bracket race. Uh, second place was Robbie Winkle, the the draggy guy. He was in a four seater cam and he was using the draggy. Uh, and then uh, your first place winner was Dustin Couch, the guy who got second in the uh, stock turbo class. Uh, nice. I, I also just want to say real quick, uh, Roberta Fisher's uh, car was awesome. Uh, her and her husband, Charlie, were really cool, too. Shout out to Charlie and Roberta. They were awesome. Uh, now, I got to ask because I seen a picture of who won the dinosaur race. <laughs> uh, uh, I believe the white one. <laughs> <laughs> Because they all had different colors. And it was, re- it was really funny. They were running. They did another one on Saturday. And they ran right in front of us on the return road. And there was one in the very back who got tangled up in his costume. And he just, like, fell over. <laughs> <laughs> he was just running and just fell over. It was kind of funny. But it I, was, think, I think we need no, to bring the dinosaur races to every track. Yes, dinosaur <laughs> races are always great. Put them on quads, even. It'd be even better. But So, anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> Somebody's question about uh, the facilities. They are top notch. They really are. They are, they're brand new. So they do have a few things you got to work out, but it's nothing they can't totally fix. This is going to be a great place to have some great races at. Now, is it going to be, and the, this is supposed to be the record reset or something like that, but I mean, um, maybe not a record setting track, but it's kind of like a Toka, you know, like, it's a great place to go have fun bracket race it'd be a good top preliminary track when some things get worked out um really thankful i gotta say this anthony moss i'm really thankful he showed up because if he didn't show up with his car and show what kind of other vehicles can race at these tracks um the, then the i don't think they would be as interested so i really appreciate anthony moss for coming out um randy kimberly had uh, three trailer tires go out on him as soon as he Jesus. left. So, and yeah, it was just a whole. A whole question deal. for you, um, Billy, um, Anthony, what what does he typically run, like at other tracks? Just just so we kind of get like a first time out. Oh, first I thought time out with been out car. to Atoka before. Yeah, he has, but he's Don. first time out. First time out with that car. Oh that, shoot! Okay, well, car. I guess we'll that find Sorg, out. Yeah, that was Sorg's old car that. That was John's old car that he sold to Kimberly, and then Kimberly sold it to Anthony Moss. It used to be pink. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I didn't realize it was that chassis, John. It was a pink dragster yeah. with like blue flames and it had eyeballs on the half body. It had eyeballs oh. on the front of the half body. Three three four nine was the number. Isaac will close. Oh, Volkswagen. I feel, like Isaac, I feel like Isaac should know this. Yeah, it was all. Yeah, it was a Volkswagen car, right, John? Yes, sir. Yeah. What was your best time in it, John? With Volkswagen or the V8? Either. Oh, shoot. You had two? Okay, well, tell us about <laughs> Yeah, the Volkswagen was in the 340s, and then the V8, we got down to the three twos with an automatic in it. That was a oh, small wow. nitrous. It was the car that Randy Kimbley took second place with in Top Eliminator at the uh, USA versus Puerto Rico race in Virginia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Johnny, whose car was that before you had it? That was built by Jensen and I. Oh, it's that car. Okay. That's the car. I, now I know which car. Oh, okay, about. there it is. There it is. <laughs> Light bulb. It, it, it had to be some historical piece of knowledge that none of us would know. <laughs> so Isaac you know, know what car we're talking about. Billy, do you know if that's the same motor that uh, Randy had in it? Uh, when no. he was running top limiter? Different it motor? Is not. The okay. motor that Randy had in it was a badass small block. Uh, this one is also a badass small block, but not as badass. It was the one gotcha. that was in sticker shock. They oh, took, okay. Oh, took, oh, they, that, they that's pretty. Ice. I think that's pretty similar to the times that he's run with it. Then. Yeah, I mean, his best pass was like a three seventy six or something like that. But yeah, uh, you know, new track, new car, trying to test the car, <laughs> new track. You know, it's sure. Both goes both ways. But, um, you know, it's a great time. Uh, I'm very excited about going back. Uh, obviously, I do the America's Oasis ad read for y'all, and you kind of know what it looks like. Um, so yeah, yeah, we took a look at it last week. Yeah, photos yeah. will be up hopefully soon. I'm going to yeah. try to get to those this week. So maybe by the time you guys uh, get this episode out, uh, we'll have photos for you. Maybe. Maybe. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, America's Oasis is going to be a great time. I'm already, uh, maybe, oh, I'm just going to say it. I was talking to Tyler Palmer earlier about maybe doing a no bar race over there. You never know. We'll see what we can I do. I mean, that would be a great track for because it's going to let them get a lot of wheel speed up and be a lot easier to keep the nose down on in that sandy Heck, surface. It's, it's wide enough, too, that they could. So, Tyler Palmer with ATV Sand Wars, they, they like to do their four wide racing. Right. It's sure is wide enough that you could do two mm -hmm. lanes per per lane that they have built at right. that track. Yeah, it could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it'll be and uh, it, it's going to be a good track. After we get after we touch up on some things, it's going to be a great place to go racing at uh, Mid America Hopeful track. Let's go. Um, awesome. Anyway, we're going to move on and spend very short time on the Puerto Rico race because I know. Um, not really everybody knows in what exactly what happened there, but I did see some pictures that Pal Fibru shared, and Pal Fibru, shout out to them. They always do a great job. Um, Photo goals. No kidding. Right. They did. Pal Fibru is badass. Um, I, Louise Angel, Pal Fibru, come on the show. Anyway, first place in Turbo Street. L Delivery. Awesome name. All these names are awesome. Second place, Crazy Pilot number one. Third oh, the place. One that car came up Newtown so, with it. Third yep. place, The Alcoholic. Fourth place, Carlitos Destroyer. <laughs> hey, Carlitos Destroyer, if I'm not mistaken, I think they've got the record in Turbo Street, too. Oh, well. If I'm not mistaken, I, I could be wrong on that. But those things go crazy, which I, I know you sent a, a video of, of one of the passes, Billy, where yeah. two of the cars almost hit each other. In the, yeah, in as they were crossing out. the finish line, they crossed over and almost it was like bumper to bumper stuff. It was. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did hit each other, though. That's what's crazy. Nope. It, was, it was so close. Uh, if I have it, I'll put it in here. Um, open bracket. First place. La Cardiac. Second place. <laughs> Second place, The Toxic. Third place, New Masca. Fourth place, Ricky DeClet. Fifth place, The Widow. And then Turbo Street Legal. First place, Mr. Cash. <laughs> Second place, The Insane. 
third place war machine <laughs> and fourth place the dinosaur okay I'm not gonna lie. that, Vinny, color, Vinny, that are you gonna... sounds like a cast of like marvel characters <laughs> on, on that note that that's something we need to bring back here in the states more people Name your race cars again. Yes, yes, we would love. Yes, yes, I was gonna say, I Damien, agree. are you getting like you know Monster Truck vibes going on right now? <laughs> well, there's, I we've got the leftovers name on our Jeep, and I look around, we've got so many people we race with just bright orange truck, dark blue truck. Kind of calling out someone who's in one of our profile pictures there. <laughs> Wayne's black Jeep even though his other Jeep's got the American made name on it and just so on it. It just, it kills me to see that people don't give their cars that personality anymore. Oh, well, that was Damien's little rant on naming <laughs> your vehicles. Hey, I, I, vehicles. I, I, I approve that message <laughs> and I'm, I'm working on getting my, my hood wrapped. I got to get design ready for it, but you all right, right here. I was going to wait till the end of the show, but I'm gonna do it right now. Giveaway opportunity right now. Give us the best name for your vehicle right now in the YouTube comments. Leave us a comment in the YouTube. Give us a nickname of your car, of your child's car, of your quad. I don't care. Put the name of your vehicle that you race in the comments. The two favorites that we like as WSDN will get free t-shirts. So leave a comment of the name of your vehicle in our YouTube comments, and you could possibly win free wsdn merch do it right now question no of... isaac you're not legal for it <laughs> no, no 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 and that's okay i'm fine with that to piggyback on what damien said if you're gonna drive something that doesn't have a name on it and the announcer has to make one up you are not allowed to get butt hurt about whatever name he comes up with there there's my right, I, right I agree i agree I, I'll, I'll roll with that i'll roll with that all day I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start naming people's vehicles at Thunder Valley now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, that was our Puerto Rico recap, and uh, right now we're actually going to kick it over to our talks or interviews with uh, Derek Howard. We're going to talk to him about Toka Motorsports Park first race. And we're going to talk to Nick Store, and we're going to see what New England Sand Drags has coming up this season. Our interviews are brought to you by America's Oasis. They have plenty of ways to stay. Go stay with them at America's Oasis. They provide a variety of ways to stay near Little Sahara State Park. Choose from their daily, weekly, monthly, or annual reservations in one of their cabins, barns, or RV spaces, or primitive camping. If you're only attending for the day, they also offer daily parking and event passes. Say they have plenty of ways to stay, they really mean it. Take your pick from a variety of on-site amenities from fun recreation to everyday conveniences and planned activities, or explore the local area and find a variety of ways to adventure off-site. The venue, amenities, racing tracks, short course racing, and they have plenty of upcoming events as well. So visit americasoasis.com, book your spot today. Here is our interviews with Derek Howard of Atoka Motorsports Park in Atoka, Oklahoma and next door of New England Sand Drags. We are back with Mr. Derek Howard. And I'm joined by John Sorg as well. We are going to talk to Derek about the Atoka Motorsports Park season opener and just maybe some other things they got going on. Uh, first and foremost, Derek, how's it going? How are you doing? It's going well. I'm doing good. How about y'all? Well, we're doing pretty well. Pretty well now. We're going to figure out uh, how these results from uh your guys' first points race went um before we get into that can you introduce yourself to everybody for us please yes sir i am derek howard from atoka oklahoma i'm almost 42 i've been here my whole life been with the track almost since day one um got my first car in 1992 started actually racing my mini dragster in 1994 race from up until 2008 we i won the championship in 08 and pro one cars put the car up for sale and became a track official and been a track official starter stage and lanes official from 09 till present day so how, how the track 
helped with the track even when I was racing. So nice. So how old were you when you started racing at Toka? Ninety two, I was ten. So ten years old. Running that mini dragster, that red and yellow one? That red and yellow one. Was that motorcycle powered? Two fifty Kawasaki Ninja. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um and then whenever you started racing your car, tell us about the car that you race. The last altered, the last one. Both of them. The first one was that 250 Kawasaki Ninja car. I ran it up until 1999. 99 had a 1100 Suzuki motorcycle motor mini dragster. It went 409 for my career best in it. Nice. Went back to the 250 for two years. Got the Sudden Pleasure Dragster, ran it for two years. And then we bought the Altered in 2005, ran it up until 2008. It went a career best of 331, 104 miles an hour. What was the name of that Altered? Thunder Slug. The Thunder Slug. I love it. I love it. And then, uh, so you won points in 08, you said, right? Yep. Well, that must have felt pretty good. And then your dad had that really cool dragster, front engine dragster, right? Yeah. You racing the sand? Tell us about yes. that. I think he got it in late 93 or 94. And he ran it up until around 2004 because we got the altered in 2005 and we became partners. And he won three Pro One championships with it. Oh wow! I think he ran a three fifty-five was his best at ninety something miles an hour. Woo! That's awesome. That car was cool. I loved all them front engine dragsters that raced at Atoka back in the day. Yep. Um, John, you got any questions before we move into the results? Ah, do you guys still have that car around? The one you went three thirty-one with? I remember no, that we, car. We sold it. It went towards Ponca City and then I don't know exactly where it went from there. Okay. So I don't know who has it at the moment. I'll say that was a nice car. I always liked that car even when it was on the West Coast, you know. Thank you. Well, it, no, actually it came off asphalt. Oh, oh, that's right. We got it from a guy in Chicago. Oh. Okay, I got that mixed up with a different one. Must have been a different thunder slug out there, right? Multiple of them, multiple thunder slugs. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into these uh, March, your March race results for Atoka, which is your guys' first points race of 2024. You guys had a test and tune uh, back in February, and then this is your guys' first points race. And I'll kind of let you just take the lead here and just, uh, just start wherever you want to start and then we'll kind of list we'll list the class we'll talk we'll talk about who won and then we'll go to the next class okay uh let's start with pro one cars okay um team texas pretty much dominated john acker won both trophy and money that's crazy uh, he <laughs> if you look at the points I think the top Oklahoma driver is like sixth or seventh in points. So, Team Texas kind of put a whooping on us. Oh, man. They, they, they wow. say that, but it's true. And John, Mr. Acker was on it. Dude, Jack, John Acker shows up when it's time to show up. He was actually running Brianna's dragster, right? Correct. Yep. And he was, he was running, what was the times he was running? Like 380s, 370s maybe? Yeah. Ever past that I saw, I didn't watch every one of them, but it was like a 371 to 374, 375. Of, He's too good. He is too good. It would be in five rounds in each deal, so 12 passes. Well, who nice. got run, who got runner-up in those Pro 1 classes, the Pro 1 cars, money, and trophy? John Acker and, got first of both. He... In the trophy, he raced Braden Baker, which is a rookie, took over his dad's car. He is like 14 years old from Bonham. 
driving the turkey killer car. <laughs> His first pro one race and makes it all the way to the final. Which which uh which car is that again? Uh Wound Pal. Wound Pal. Oh, yeah, I like that car. I just like saying it. Wound Pal. That's awesome. Yeah. Ooh. That's a cool car. Yes. And then he John raced uh Brad Civils in the money. So another Team Texas racer. Yeah, Brad's Brad's pretty damn good himself too. So Brad's yeah. most lap. John Acker believe, putting on a clinic. So I believe Brad broke out. I believe. Tell us about the rules for your Pro One Cars class, and then uh, tell us how the points, how which which one goes towards points. Uh, Pro One Cars is four point five zero and quicker. You have to dial a four fifty or faster. There's no no leeway. That's what you got to dial. Pro Tree, and it has to be. A row cage it can't be a quad so and then the points are earned in the money class the only time we do points in the trophy is the july double points race oh okay i always wondered how that double points work that's kind of cool okay it's because it's hot and people don't want to show up it's an incentive to come because there's the extra points on the line that's very true that's very true. And how many Pro One cars did you guys have in the money? And then how many did you have in the trophy? 20 entered the money class, 17 in the, I'm sorry, 20 in the trophy class, 17 in the money. Which one do you guys run first? You run the trophy class first? And we run the trophy class first. That's okay. We do that. That's basically where the track makes its money. Okay. Because we, we're 100% paid back. So we do it first. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. And then uh, let's move on to whichever one you want to do next, whichever class you want to do next. Uh, shout out to, shout out to Team Texas for taking over Pro 1 cars. Yes. Let's finish the cars and go to Pro 2 cars. Okay. <clears throat> Cody Ford from Atoka won the trophy class. He defeated Luke. I believe his last name was pronounced Heisey. He's one of the Team Texas racers from uh, Curtis Grady's nephew. Okay. Uh, I believe he just started at the end of last year, so I'm not real familiar with him. But this kid looks like he's going to be a challenge for Audra and Jessica Powell and those Pro 2 racers. Because <clears throat> he came out and won the money and defeated Audra Matthews in the final. Wow, so they already got to look at him because he got second in trophy, and then he goes on to win the money, and now he's yeah. first in points. And while in doing that, Audra won points last year, did she not? Correct. Yeah, so she he, he, he took defeated out the... Audra twice this weekend. He, he beat Audra twice and Jessica Powell twice, so two of your top Pro 2 runners. Well, Luke just painted a target on his back. That's what just happened there. They're, he, they're coming for him now. Yes. And we had 12, 12 entries in Pro 2 cars. In both money and trophy, you had 12? Yes. Nice. 12 in each. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And it's 4.50 and slower. And they run on a full tree. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, what am I saying that for? I knew that. Um. Okay, wherever you want to go, where do you want to go next? You want to go Pro 1 Quads? And side by sides can run in that class. That's yes. where we put our side by sides. Um, if you're fast enough, side by sides could also run your Pro One cars, right? Correct. Yeah. We we changed the rules. Used to side by sides ran with the quads. We changed it because that's when quads were getting too many entries and cars were not. So we moved side by sides to the cars. Yeah, we did the same thing. So. I don't blame you. Um, I guess we'll go Pro One Quads next. Okay. Um, Bryce Williams, he bought the old Keith A. Hart quad. Fuck, that's awesome. He bought it from he, Randy? Yep. Got so he's running Randy. Keith Keith A. Hart's old bike. is still out there running, and, it, and it's winning races, it looks like. That's awesome. That's awesome. I remember yeah. that bike years ago. 
up in Michigan. The guy was awesome. Well, he was eating. Well, he wasn't running it because I think the last time I seen him running in person, I think if he was running in prim in 2006, then I seen him run it. But uh, if not, then I never seen him run. But I do remember watching old videos and looking at pictures from magazines of him racing that bike. That thing is awesome. So, yes. Shout out to Bryce Williams for running that bike still. Go ahead, Derek. You probably did see him in 2006, Sim, because I think Keith wrecked in 08 or 09, I think. Or it might have been after that. Mm. Then that's when he quit the quad, I think. Right. Well, I saw him in person. Race that bike. That's awesome. I'm going to see Bryce yeah. race this bike Memorial Day weekend, too. That would be great. Actually, right. I think I seen him race it last year, too. Who probably. Knows? Was you at Fall Fest? Nope. I was not. Okay. Well, Bryce Williams pretty much dominated the class. He took the trophy and the money. And the trophy, he defeated the Quillian Hill. I believe the Quillians from the Amarillo area. They're pretty new with us. And then in the money class, he defeated Greg White. He's also from Amarillo. The Quillian and Greg are teammates. Awesome. Well, shout out to those teammates for – well, they didn't win, but they got second. They almost got it. So they got, they got a little bit of money. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So let's go on to Pro Two Quads here. What Pro do you got? Pro Two Quad uh, is the basically the Anthony Moss show. Anthony <laughs> won. <laughs> Anthony Moss won first in both money and trophy. In the trophy, he defeated Blake Johnson. Um. That's basically his neighbor. And in the money, he defeated Stephanie Smithart from Atoka. No, those Smithharts ain't easy to beat. So shout out to Anthony Moss. Shout out to Anthony Moss for coming out to America's Oasis also. Really appreciate yeah. him having his Draxer out there. Helped me out a lot. Um, well, yeah. Congrats to Anthony for killing Pro 2 quads. It looks like he's going to have a good points lead as well. So See if he can't defend his championship again. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, well, it looks like the next class he wasn't too far off either. What do you got next? Next is Pro 3 Quads. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is, uh, I didn't ask you what Pro 1 Quads was, the time break for that. Gotcha. Pro 1 and Pro 2 and Pro 3. Tell us the difference for those for Quads, please. Pro 1 Quads is now 4.99 and faster. And this year they are running a Pro Tree. Nice. So Pro Two is those will be the Mid America uh, rules also. Just saying. Yes. Yep. Pro Two quads five flat to five ninety nine, full tree. And then Pro Three is six flat and slower, full tree. Six flat and slower. I never knew that. That's awesome. Wait, I did yes. know that. I raced my mini bike in that class. It was yes. No, it's not on my wall. I thought it was, but yeah, that was a good time. Um, Pro 3 trophy, Gage Fearhelm took the win over Anthony Moss. Who's Gage Fearhelm? It's Tim's oldest son. Oh. Laura's stepbrother. Gage Smith? Is that what I'm reading? Gage, Mr. Gage Smith? <laughs> yeah, Gage Smith Fearhelm, yep. <laughs> and then... In the money, Anita Zerling took the win. That is Stephanie's mother, Stephanie Smithart. She really? defeated Anthony Moss. Nice. Anthony's, what, four final rounds? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, Anthony got second in both rounds. of them. Wow, yep. that's awesome. Shout out to Anita. Shout out to Gage for taking out Anthony that apparently yep. the Pro 2 quad racers couldn't do. <laughs> and then uh, Juniors. Yes. Junior is... 15 and younger, which we've kind of changed that. It's kind of more like 10 to 15 age group. And it's basically anything goes as far as vehicle wise. As long That's as true. In there. I, I saw a freaking kid in a Jeep Grand Cherokee or something. Just Jeep Grand Cherokee, Jeep. Mini Dragster, Quads, Go Kart. What's the ET limits on that? Do you guys have ET limits on that class? Nope. Impressive. All right. Basically, run what you've run, 
be under 15, 15 or under. We're trying to make Peewee's nine and younger push the juniors 10 to 15. Try nice. to get the older kids out of Peewee's and move them into juniors. Yeah, I like it. Hmm. And uh, juniors, the trophy winner was Kaysen Shull. He's the one that drives the Jeep Grand Cherokee. He defeated first-time racer Carly Frazier. She's part of that Team 34 with the team of Team 34 out of bottom, uh, Daniel Baker and his team. Nice. And she turned around and won the money. So she got second in the trophy, won the money. Carly Frazier did. And second went to Bodie Smithhart. Shout out to him. He's the one that cut the perfect light. And oh. he, he was very happy that he cut the perfect light. Uh, track gave him $5. I got some stuff for him. I just didn't have it with me at the track. So he'll get it at April race. And he's going to get some more stuff. But he was so excited he's going to take his time slip to school and show it off. That's awesome. That's awesome. The only other class we got is Pee Wee's, which is basically nine and under, and there's no time limit on that. Uh, Dalton Thomas with Team 34 out of bottom one. Uh, we had 18 entries in Pee Wee's. First nice. time racer Chevy Ludy was second, and third went to Grant Rainey. All righty. Well, shout out to those Pee Wee's that are – uh, getting some valuable seat time and growing the future of our sport. Uh, just reiterate, juniors and peewees are bracket classes. Yes, correct. All righty, yep. nice, nice. Uh, when's your guys' next race? April twelfth and thirteenth. And you guys are the second weekend of every month is when you race, correct? Second Saturday of every month. Second Saturday each month. Okay, yep. okay. All righty. Well, we are very much looking forward to the next update you bring us from the next points race that a token motorsports park will have in April. Um, anything you want to plug that Atoka's is doing this year? We are still trying to get our Heartland national schedule posted. Hopefully that will be soon. That'll be Memorial weekend and Thanks to everybody that's been coming out and supporting us, especially all of our sponsors. I think they're all uploaded now on the website. So if you get a chance, look at our website, support our sponsors if you can, because we couldn't do it without them. I appreciate every one of them. I do work hard to try to get those. So I really appreciate all of our sponsors. I'm not going to name them all because that would take too long, but I really appreciate all of it. And I appreciate what y'all do for the sport and, helping us get the word out and maybe get some new people to Atoka. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Derek, we really appreciate your time. We'll see you again in a month to do this again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Quick ad read between our interviews, LoneStarGraphics.info. Uh, the Lone Star Graphics folks take great pictures, can put your photo on pretty much anything, license plates, tote bags, T-shirts, which are awesome. They use a really soft T-shirt. Picture goes on great. No edges to it. It's fantastic. Um, but banners, you name it. LoneStarGraphics.info is the only place you can check those out. Uh, they have photo galleries going back all the way till 2006. So very early pro truck days and even. So lots of stuff for you to look through. Check it out. LoneStarGraphics.info. And now we're going to segue into our interview with Nick Storr from New England Sand Drags, talking about their summer coming up and what they have in store. We are back with two very special guests. We are here with Nick Storr and Justin Levy, two board members at New England Sand Drags. And New England Sand Drags is located in Maine, uh, Haram, Maine. And we'll kind of get more into that here in a second. But um, Nick... And Je Justin, uh, just one at a time, go ahead and give us a quick introduction of you guys, of yourselves, excuse me. Um, I'm Nick. Uh, I race at New England Sand Drags. I'm a board member. I race a 94 Chevy short box on alcohol. 
Um, I'm Justin Livy. I've been racing with uh, New England Sand Drags uh, for a little over 20 years. Um, I started off in a 80s style Chevy short bed, just out to have fun. And now I'm in a fiberglass Jeep body with a 440 in it and having a lot more fun. <laughs> it sounds like a blast already. So um, let's go ahead and just dive right into our New England Sand Drags talk real quick. Um, New England Sand Drags, tell us a little bit about it, when it started, um, how long you guys been running, and just just a brief uh, details on New England Sand Drags. So it started back in 83. 83. Last year was 40 years. And it started pretty much the two founding, they're actually still on the board. The two founding members started, a, um, it's been a couple different places, but it, yeah. they started, it started off in a sand pit and it just grew and grew. And uh, it, we've been around, like I said, for 40 years. And, you know, it's, it's a, great organization we used to travel and stuff but it, nowadays it's a little difficult we used to do fair shows and have a couple tracks and now we just have one central track in Hiram Maine which is um it's at a fairgrounds but we have a, a permanent track out there now and we do 10 races a year out there and it's a lot of fun well, I'm glad I know it. it's Hiram now. I, I said Haram like an idiot. So that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, I have a quick question just about your guys' track. Uh, John Sorg's with us too. Forgot to mention that. John Sorg from Michigan's with us. Um, what's your guys' track record? It is uh, 3.46 in the top class cars and a 3.50 in the top class ATV. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Um, Wait, what was that ATV time again? 3.50. 3.50. Well, he's about right there with the cars, ain't he? Um, so what uh what's your guys' kind of track rules? What's your guys' class structure? And um just tell us a little bit about the rules and classes that you guys have. Okay, it starts off with uh we actually we have a peewee class <laughs> that it's just um ATVs and they're what four they yeah, start at four. four. To four to six years old they have to race in that for two years before they can jump up to a junior class and then um they go into a junior class uh that goes until they can't go any faster than a 7-0 in that class and then it bumps up to a atv trail class and then i am not exactly positive on the cutoff to the atv it goes atv trail and then ATV top class, and it's all determined on time. I believe it's a five seven right now to get trail to um, top class. And then we do, it's a street modified class as far as the cars go. And the only, the stipulations in the street modified is- um, You can't run faster than a five oh. Yeah, you can't run faster than the five ball. You can't go over a paddle, so no scoops, no bigger diggers, no. And then they also uh, no electronics, I believe. So no tranny brakes or anything like that. Hmm. And then we have the top eliminator class, yeah. which is five ball and faster. And then it, it's all uh, whatever you can put to it. What was the name of that class? The five ball and faster one. It's a top eliminator class. Yeah, because we just run a bracket style, so yeah, it's all bracket racing. So oh, okay. every class is bracket racing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. They're all bracket racing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I thought they were all heads up. I was going to say like, damn. No, no, <laughs> no. It's no. all it's all bracket it's racing. All bracket. So cool. We keep it uh fair and competitive with the bracket racing, and we love it. Yeah, definitely keep it fair that way. Yeah. Yeah. How's your guys' turnouts been out there? Uh it's pretty like car, good. What's yeah. that? Like in your car counts, pretty good, solid. It's actually gotten better the last few years. Um, I think pre-COVID was probably the worst. 
actually. Yeah. And then it seemed like after COVID, it actually we got a few more cars in, honestly. That's awesome. What about your ATC? Yeah, it is bouncing back. I think we got like 18 in the top class right now. Oh. The middle class um, is, it kind of took a hit and it's bouncing back. But I think there's only like um, about 10 trucks in 10 that trucks, yep. around there. But uh, it, it's it's definitely bouncing back quick. Well, that's, that's awesome. good. That's good to hear. That is awesome. From talking with everybody, we got more cars coming in this year, so that's good. It's pretty interesting. You guys said it was your uh, 40th year last year. Same with uh, Silverback. That oh, was really? their 40th year. We started in '83. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's gonna be that's crazy. Look at that. A couple 40 years yeah. still in the game. Yeah. Um, what does New England got coming up this season? Uh, we got the season opener coming up, and that's May 4th, 5th. That's going to be a test and tune and a points race. Yeah. And then um, the, our big races are in July. Yeah, our biggest race is in July. Then we take a month off. We race once in August. What makes July so big? Don't just skim by and say it's the big race of the year. Oh, uh, it's the it. fair race. So, we, we race during the fair. Yeah. Okay. And so it draws a big crowd and it, um, it's a real fun weekend, and we get a lot of guys from out of state, New York, and all of New England, Connecticut, and it, it's it's a pretty a, a little bit bigger payout. Um, uh, it all depends on the show turnout, obviously, right. but um, it, it it it's just a really fun race. Well, that sounds crazy. like it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I kind of have a particular question to i think it's your guys's rules this may be your rules i've heard it's one of your rules i don't know um do you guys have a rule that says you have to put a muffler on the vehicle and if so why do you have that rule yes we do have that rule um about and it, it's not a muffler you can run baffles which are just caps on the end of your headers but um either way um we got into somebody bought a we're we're right on the side of a river mm -hmm. on the back and across the river somebody bought a house and they had a lot of money and got lawyers involved and what we have is uh the state of um the state is um really pristine on their waters and all that. They they have the soccer river corridor that yeah. they call. They kept, came after us with their lawyers and, and it was a uh, I hadn't explained it on camera, but we're a nonprofit organization. Don't have a lot of money to fight. So in order to keep racing at our already established track, we had to put baffles in all the vehicles. So just to, and we did a lot of sound barrier fencing and everything and all that. And it, it's just to keep that, those houses on the other side of the river happy is pretty much what it all comes down to. And we don't really have the extra funding to go through another battle. So we, we've kept the rule implemented. So just to keep from having more problems. Right. And I mean, for what we, we could have lost it all, but so. Well, sounds like you got some boring neighbors. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I believe it's just a a, a, big, a weekend home for them. I, they might only be there a couple times a year. I, I have no idea. But either way, yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating situation. But we we don't need the battle. And and, and all honesty, like I, I run baffles in my car, and other than I lose the better sound i haven't noticed any difference on my uh et i can go over to the neighbor's house and give them some free tickets and tell them to come on over <laughs> yeah there yeah you go. enjoy yeah, the show cool. people you're up yeah. for the weekend exactly <laughs> you're already there <laughs> um let's check in after every one of your guys's races and then you okay. guys can give us results and we'll talk about it here and we'll put it on the podcast for the following episode and stuff like that. 
That right. sounds great. Sounds good. Yeah. That'd be um, great hearing from you guys some more. But we do thank you guys for joining us, and uh, we'll definitely check in with you guys uh, right after your guys' first race. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. We're going to talk about Dome Valley's race coming up this weekend, which Caleb will not be at because he'll be getting married. Yeah. We uh, we give Caleb a lot of shit sometimes, but we are <laughs> excited for the adventure you and Julia are about to take. So congratulations to you, you guys' next step in life. And uh, congratulations and good luck to everything moving forward with you two. I wish you all the best. Wish I would be there. Thank you. Great. Plug registry plug one more time. Yeah, you guys. Right there. No. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's actually in the it's actually in the description in the YouTube. And and don't forget, guys, Bill, Billy's is coming up next. Yeah, we'll get that later. We got some <laughs> racing to do first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so Don Valley's Arizona Sand Drag Shootout is this weekend. Uh, second points race. Correct, Caleb? Yep. Correct. All right. All right. And um, our mini dragster and AAUTV record holder is going to be there to run top eliminator against those guys, and they're going to try to lower that record as well. So it's going to be very, very awesome to see that. And then Wayne is also going out there to yes. try his records. Whoa, I did not know that. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. I didn't realize that either, Billy. I, that was going to be – Damien kind of beat me to it, but that was going to be my my little preview add-on there is that, yeah. Well, that's right. What about Far Away? Are they doing that too? Uh, No. I they, know. they were talking I, I was, about it. They were talking yeah, about it. I was like, hey, you guys should try it. I think you'd like it. You know, yeah. it's a little bit more like home. I would have loved to see Dave go out there, just turn the bottle off, go out there, and just bracket race. <laughs> Man, uh, it, well, dude, that's awesome. Wayne's going to love it. Um, I'm mm-hmm. sure – um. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, We're gonna have to get so those yeah. records updated pronto because who knows they might be broken again. <laughs> well, right. I even, I'm just waiting. Then. And uh, so admission looks like it's about the same: twenty bucks for adults, five bucks for kids. Kids ages four and under are free. Uh, when they say kids, they say twelve to five. Ages thirteen and up, twenty bucks to get in. Uh, heads up sessions are Friday. 2 p.m. Saturday at 2 p.m. or no, excuse me, Friday 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Saturday 2 p.m. 5 p.m. Sunday 11 a.m. 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. for eliminations, and they have their tickets available online, and you can find all their other information on their social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and you can check out DomeValleyRaceway.com. So yeah, um. Nick Schultzman is also going to go out there and try to lower that record. Also, what's up, Isaac? So, since you opened the box of the mini dragster and double A UTV business, um, are they going to self stage that car this time? From what I spoke to race last, that they that was the plan. Um, and yeah, they potentially entering in the top limiter we'll see what they end up doing with it but i think it'd be really fun to see a utv run in the ranks of top eliminator um obviously some stiff competition in that class and it'd be it'd be fun it i i would 100 percent agree as long as they can self-stage it if they can't those top limiter guys are going to lose their marbles oh yeah they definitely <laughs> will i agree with that they're going to be like they're yeah they're going to lose it but uh <laughs> You know, they're, I'm sure they figured something out. Um, yeah. They also, uh, they also, uh, they are also running ATVs. So let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ATV actually, guys, I, you got somewhere to go. It, shout out to um, one of my buddies that normally goes out to SoCal. Um, he's going out there for his first time, Marcus Rydell. Um, definitely, you see him in the winter circle a lot um in uh avenal and uh at lake elsinore give me his first trip there i think he's gonna really enjoy it um it's always cool seeing people try new places um whether it's out of necessity or just because you want to you know um it's i think he's gonna like it i think uh wayne is gonna like it um out there a lot um yeah we'll see uh i 
you know, we'll see if Cody and uh, and Farwick end up getting out there. I was really trying to push them that direction, but they were like, uh, uh, flight's going back, you know, this and that. So we'll see. For sure. For sure. Next time, maybe a little more notice. They can plan it. Right. Who knows? Um, Man, I am excited because uh, they are running top alcohol also. I haven't heard of any top alcohol guards going to be there besides Nick. Um, So it could just be a good weekend for Nick to try to lower his record. Who knows? Yeah. He, he's still running on that hurt rear end, though, so I don't know if we're going to see crazy numbers. But if uh, Jim Napsiger decides that he wants to enter top alcohol again, might be a cool little battle between them running some some 280s, 270s. Yeah. yeah. Or he might, just slow, he might just slow it down and just run top eliminator then. He might Possible as well. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Tell us, Nick. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So yeah. Um we're gonna also else? gonna we're gonna try to have uh some coverage from there um just to get stuff from, from the track staff to, to send to yeah. us. I um, talked to Esteban, he said he's gonna uh get us winners information and stuff like that. Yeah. So he mentioned to me as well that he's gonna maybe try to see if he can get us some, some live feeds that we can share. So um, just stay tuned this weekend, folks. Um, we may have some some stuff to be able to put up for you guys. You can see there's poor scheduling on somebody's part with the wedding and the race. <laughs> like, in in my defense, the wedding was planned prior to Dome's full schedule being out. So there you go. Pointing the blame. I see what kind of person you are. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I at this point it's maybe gonna be raining um on my wedding, which I know they say is uh good luck, but I I really wish it wasn't gonna rain. And I'm like, man, maybe uh maybe we should have done this the the weekend after or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, too late to postpone, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You postpone points races, but not weddings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, once again, Caleb, Julia, congratulations. Yes. Wish you all the best in the future. Um, on behalf of myself and Damian Bowers, I Han, Caleb Mings, this is the end of Paddle Talk. We will see you guys on next week's episode.